Okay, this is an example of Coulomb's law. So suppose two point charges of one millicoulombs and negative two millicoulombs are located at three, two, negative one and negative one, negative one, four, respectively. Calculate the electric force on a 10 nanocoulomb charge located at zero, three, one and the electric field at that point. So I've already, for the sake of time, drawn the figure. The figure is probably not going to be given to you and you need to be able to draw this figure as well. So in blue I, I've labeled the two charges. One millicoulomb is charge one and negative two millicoulombs is charge two. Then the point that we're interested in, I've got a red X there and for the first part of the problem there's a 10 nanocoulomb charge and we're going to find the electric force Fe. So that's going to be the sum of two forces, the one due to charge one, which I'm calling F1, and the one due to charge two, which I'm calling F2. Then we're going to calculate the electric field at that point due to those two blue charges. Now notice that 10 nanocoulombs and one millicoulomb have the same sign, so, so this, uh, this 10 nanocoulomb charge is going to be um, repelled against that, so that's, uh, that's why F1 is pointing up and to the right. And then the charge 2 and our 10 nanocoulombs have different signs, so the 10 nanocoulombs is going to be attracted to that minus 2 millicoulombs. So that's why I have F2 pointing the way that I do. All right, let's get started. So let's first begin by finding the force due to charge 1. This is the force due to charge 1, F1. Okay, so according to Coulomb's law, that force is K times Q1 times the, the charge in question, you know, this 10 nanocoulomb. So I'm just going to call that Q without a subscript, divided by the distance in between those two points squared. That's Coulomb's law. And then that force acts uh, on the line that is a unit vector between those two directed as F1 in my figure. Okay, so let's just plug in what we know. This is K, Q, Q1 over. Now we've got R1 squared, which is the distance between charge 1 and the red X, and then a unit vector in that direction as well. So that's going to be R Right, which is the distance vector between the two, divided by r, which is the length of that vector, right? That's a unit vector. And so we've got r cubed in the denominator, which is the separating distance. Okay, more on that in a second. And then vector r, the distance vector, so we want um, the, the distance vector from charge 1 to the red x. So that's going to be 0 minus 3, so here's our, our 2, our destination, right, minus the, um, or the, the beginning point, 0 minus 3, so that's in the x direction, plus 3 minus 2 in the y direction, plus 1 plus 1, right, 1 minus negative 1 in the z direction. So that's our vector, and then we need the length of that cubed. So what's the length of that vector? Well, it's the square root of negative 3 squared, right, that's the x component, plus 1 squared, that's the y component, plus 2 squared, that's the z component, the square root of that, but then we have it cubed, right, there, uh, there should be no subscript on this. We don't need a subscript here, though. that's the same r. I don't really need a subscript there. I guess it's the distance from, yeah, I guess, let's, let's keep it. So that's the distance f uh, from charge 1 to our red X, because we're going to do this again for charge 2. Okay, so I have R1 cubed, so the distance is the square root of this, so we have a 3 halves, 3 halves power, because we have a cube, and then we have the square root from Pythagorean theorem, so that's a 3 halves. Okay, so we just calculate that, right? So we've got k q 1 times q over, so we do that, that's uh, squ 
uh, 14 to the 3 halves, so that's 14 times root 14. Okay, and then times the vector minus 3ax plus a y plus 2az. All right, and then we'll come back to that in a second. So we'll just remember that. Now we're going to move on to force 2. Okay, so now I'm looking at the red x and this blue guy up here, minus 2 millicoulombs. So again, according to Coulomb's law, the force that the red x experiences is charge 2 times q, which is the, at the charge at the x, divided by the distance between the red x and charge 2 squared times a unit vector so this a unit vector in the in the direction r2 okay so that's not bad i mean we just did this uh, for the last one so this is k q 2 times q and again we're going to have the, a similar thing here where we have this 3 halves power so I'm going to plug in the distance vector, so the destination, 0 minus the starting point, negative 1. So I'll just write this as 0 plus 1 in the x direction. Okay, then um, 3 plus 1 in the y direction. Then 1 minus 4 in the z direction. Divided by... So I'm not showing as much detail here, but divided by, um, again, we have the distance of that vector cubed, and the distance is, is related to the Pythagorean theorem. So what we have is we have 1 in the x direction, so 1 squared. We have 4 in the y direction, 4 squared. And we have minus 3 in the z direction. Pythagorean theorem says take the square root of that, but then we have that cubed. And so that's going to be to the 3 halves power again. Okay, so we we plug in some numbers and we get k q2 q over looks like uh, 16, 17, 9, 26 to the 3 halves. So that's 26 times the square root of 26 times the vector ax plus 4ay minus 3az like that. Okay? So we have those two forces. Now what do we do with those two forces? Well, this is the superposition now. Superposition says that we can add the forces together. Okay, so the electric force on the red X, that 10 nanocoulomb, is force F1 plus force F2. This is a vector equation here. So we just add the results from 1 and 2. So what do we have in common? We have a k, a q in common, right? So I'm just going to bring those out. k, q times. Okay, I have a, from force 1, I have a q1 over 14, root 14, times this vector, minus 3, ax, plus a, y, plus 2az, okay, no big deal there, and then I have plus, now this contribution, so I've already factored out the kq, so I have a q2 over 26, root 26, times ax plus 4ay minus 3az. Okay, no big deal there. Now, what I do here is I plug in k, right? k we said was 9 times 10 to the 9th, and then q. q is our charge at the red x, that's 10 nanocoulombs, 10 times 10 to the minus 9, right? q1, that was this 1 millicoulomb charge, that's 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd. And Q2 is this minus 2 millicoulombs, so minus 2 times 10 to the minus 3. And the result here is in newtons, right, because that's a force. 
that's newtons and when you when you do that calculation of course you add the x component with the x component the y component with the y component and the z component with the z component what you get is negative 6.51 rounded to three significant digits in the x direction minus 3.71 in the y direction plus 7.51 in the z direction and that would be in millinewtons because what these numbers are very small so we would have millinewtons there and that would be our answer that's the electric force now we're also asked to find what is the electric field at that point okay so I'm gonna race a little bit at the top feel free to pause the video if you need to okay so for the electric field Okay, that's defined as E is the force at that point, the electric force, divided by that Q, that little test charge that's at that point already. So all we have to do is just divide by 10 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, right? Divide everything by this Q. But remember that this is rounded. Our answer here was rounded. So we might want to go back to this equation and just take out the Q, right? We're dividing by Q. That way our rounding does not propagate um, to our answer. And then when we do that, we have the following. We get up to three significant digits, negative 651 in the X direction, minus 371 in the Y direction, plus 751 in the Z direction, and that is in kilovolts per meter or kilonewtons per coulomb. Either one is acceptable. Volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. And that is our answer.